Hi, I'm Abby Dernberg, and this is Aya Sato, a graduate student in my lab at UC Berkeley and the lead author on a new paper from our lab. We're going to take you on a brief tour of this work to tell you about some of the major questions it addresses and some of our key findings. We have focused on understanding chromosome behavior during meiosis, which is the specialized cell division to generate haploid gametes from diploid cells. During meiosis, the goal of the cell is to separate pairs of homologous chromosomes, the two copies of each chromosome inherited from each parent. These homologous chromosomes don't start out together in the nucleus, and so a key thing that has to happen is that each chromosome has to find and recognize its unique homologous partner. This pairing process culminates with the formation of the synaptonemal complex, a protein scaffold that essentially crosslinks homologous chromosomes and holds them together. The chromosomes also undergo crossover recombination, which creates linkages between homologous chromosomes that enable them to orient towards opposite poles of the meiotic spindle and ultimately to segregate to different daughter cells. Work in my lab has explored the mechanisms underlying pairing and synapsis, and as we've come to appreciate that these are actually separate processes and that formation of the synaptonemal complex doesn't actually require homology, we've wondered how pairing and synapsis are normally coordinated so that synaptonemal complex formation only occurs between properly paired homologous chromosomes. In C. elegans, which is the organism that we work in, we know that both pairing and synapsis depend on the activity of special regions near the end of each chromosome known as pairing centers, and that these regions are enriched in binding sites for a family of zinc finger proteins that we discovered and showed to be required for the activity of pairing centers in, in pairing and synapsis. Uh, we also found that these pairing centers are associated with the nuclear envelope during early meiosis. And so in this work, we've explored how it is that this connection to the nuclear envelope is established and how it contributes to the processes of pairing and synapsis. Our first insight came from the observation that the sites where pairing centers contact the nuclear envelope, here marked with antibodies against the four pairing center proteins, ZIM1, 2, 3, and HIM8, are highly enriched in a nuclear envelope protein called Zyg12. This was surprising to us because Zyg12 had actually been characterized in a totally different context. It was shown to be required to link centrosomes or microtubule organizing centers to the nucleus in early C. elegans embryos. And so we were somewhat surprised to see Zyg12 associated with meiotic pairing centers. Previous work on Zyg12 gave us some hints as to other proteins that might be associated with these pairing center attachment sites. And we've found now that the sites where pairing centers contact the nuclear envelope are also enriched in an inner nuclear envelope protein called SUN1. SUN1 is known to directly interact with Zyg12 and to be required to anchor Zyg12 in the outer nuclear envelope. And we found that through this bridge of SUN1 and Zyg12, chromosomes interact with the microtubule cytoskeleton and the dynein motor protein, and that this enables cytoskeletal forces to act on chromosomes through the intact nuclear envelope and to move them around during early meiosis. We can see that directly by live imaging here of, of a worm expressing Zyg12 GFP and M. cherry histone, which marks the chromosomes. During the, the stages of active pairing and synapsis here on the left, these nuclear envelope patches are very prominent and they're moving very actively. And then as chromosomes complete synapsis towards the right of this image, the, the nuclear envelope patches dissipate, the proteins spread throughout the nuclear envelope, and the motion slows down dramatically. So we've wondered what this motion does to, to promote pairing and synapsis. We find that when we depolymerize microtubules by adding drugs like colchicine to the worms, um, pairing between homologous chromosomes is strongly inhibited, suggesting that motion is probably important for chromosome pairing. A more surprising finding came when we depleted dynein, the dynein motor, um, during meiosis. So we found that whereas in wild-type animals, homologous chromosomes pair and synapse, as I've described, when dynein is depleted by temperature-sensitive mutations, or RNAi, chromosomes actually pair. They pair homologously, although they pair somewhat more slowly than normal. But they do not go on to synapse. And this was surprising to us because we thought that once paired, the synaptonemal complex might just form spontaneously. But this finding suggests that there's an additional active step required once chromosomes have paired for formation of the synaptonemal complex. 
We also knew from previous work that mutations in the inner nuclear envelope protein SUN1 had essentially the opposite effect. They enabled the synaptonemal complex to form essentially promiscuously between non-homologous chromosomes. And this had suggested that SUN1 creates a barrier to synapsis that inhibits synapsis until chromosomes are properly paired. So we hypothesized that dynein might somehow overcome the inhibitory activity of SUN1. And if so, in a SUN1 mutant, we would not need dynein for formation of the synaptonemal complex. And so we basically did this epistasis analysis and showed that indeed in the absence of SUN1, dynein is not required for formation of the synaptonemal complex, although the complex forms inappropriately between, between non-homologous chromosomes. So we've integrated the findings of this paper in a model which proposes that chromosomes interact with the nuclear envelope during early meiosis. They induce the, the uh, concentration of these nuclear envelope proteins SUN1 and ZYG12. This connects the chromosomes to the microtubule cytoskeleton and to the dynein motor complex. And this has at least a couple of effects on the chromosomes. It promotes the, the, the pairing of chromosomes, quite likely by just uh, accelerating the rate of chromosome motion and increasing the rate of encounters between chromosomes. But it also does something that we had not anticipated, and we call this assessment. What we think is happening is that the chromosomes are essentially assessing whether they're homologously paired before they go on to synapse, and that this requires the activity of dynein. We imagine that dynein actually tries to unpair chromosomes. If chromosomes are inappropriately or non-homologously paired, dynein is strong enough to pull apart the chromosomes, and this may enable chromosomes to have another chance to find their partner, which would increase the, the rate of pairing also. However, if chromosomes are appropriately paired, then dynein doesn't separate them. Instead, it licenses them to go on and undergo synaptonemal complex polymerization. So we're basically proposing the existence of a licensing step that, is, that requires the activity of dynein and is required for formation of the synaptonemal complex. We hope you enjoy reading our paper and we welcome your feedback. Thanks. Thanks.